Today on Game Pro, we're going to the arcades with the all-new Dragon's Lair 2. Secret tip for invincibility in Mega Man 3. We'll show you how to defeat the dragon in the Immortal. And we're gonna knock heads with the number one head knocker of them all, Bob's Revenge. All this and more on Game Pro. Let's boogie! Oh, 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 sorry. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Game Pro. I'm J.D. Roth. This is my pal, Brennan. And, uh, well, as you can see, I'm getting here a little late today, and I am really sorry. Sorry, bud. Dude, dude, what are you late for, man? I was expecting you. What happened? Um, well, you see, I was hanging back with the Game Lab guys playing this awesome new arcade game they just put in. And, uh, well, we're going to show it to you later on, and you are going to love it. Anyhow, here I am with all the video game tips and talk you come to expect week in and week out. And, uh, where do we get these globs of gamer knowledge? Knowledge? Hey, I'll tell you where. Game Pro Magazine, the number one source for home and arcade video game information. You know it. Bean Man, what's up? Wait, dude, what were you and the Gonzo dudes back there in the lab playing without me for? That, that's hurtful. No, 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 no. Chill, 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 B Man. I got the game. We kept the game so we can play during commercials. I love this job. Okay, that's cool. But, uh, dude, no commercial right now, okay? You gotta go. SWAT time, bud. SWAT oh, oh time, yeah, and bud. as we speak, I am on my way. Let's do it. Here we go. SWAT world! Whoa! Secret weapons and tactic. Whoa! Nice ride. Here I am in my home away from home, SWAT world. And here's a tip for the third installment in one of the all-time popular game series on NES, Mega Man 3. Huh. I'll get him next time, don't worry. Now, using this tactic takes guts and a friend. So make sure you got both before you try it out. Oh, missed them again, I'll get them next time. If you execute this tactic correctly, you can achieve limited invincibility and super jumping ability in Mega Man 3. Keep in mind that the invincibility part of this trick works only in the Needle Man, Snake Man, Shadow Man, and Gemini Man levels of the game. So don't bother trying it out on any other level. The super jumping works anywhere. When you're in any of these stages, fall into a hole that would normally kill Mega Man. That's right, fall into a hole that normally kills this dude. But when you fall, hold button A on controller one and right on the directional pad on controller two. Now, keep both of these buttons down until you run out of energy. You can now let up on the A button on controller one, but keep the pad down on controller two. This is where a friend comes in handy, because as long as the right directional pad stays down on controller two, you have invincibility and super jumping power. So, have your bud take care of controller two while you play the game. Now remember, the invincibility trick will only work on the Needle Man, Snake Man, Gemini Man, or Shadow Man levels, but the super jumping works everywhere. Wow, that was a lot of stuff. Let's check it out again real quick. First, fall down a killer hole on one of the stages I told you about earlier. Next, while you're falling, push down the A button on controller one and right on the pad on controller number two at the same time. Now wait until you're drained of energy. Now, have a friend hold down the controller two right pad for you while you play the game. You now have invincibility plus super jumping power throughout the entire game. Texas. Can you guys tell me how to beat the dragon in the game Immortal? My friend and I have been stuck for months. Thanks. Hey, you don't take any prisoners, do you, bud? I think you fried at least two or three of the game lab's best over here, but we got the answer, so check it out. Use the blink spell six times to avoid the dragon's first six flame bursts. Now, while this will tire him out, he's not done yet because there's still one final long blast to come. Wait for a second inhale, and then use the flame protection scroll. Next, hold the amulet up to the light, but dude, do not read the runes. Runes? Okay, I know you may be asking, dude, what's a rune? Ah, I bet you guys thought I said prunes. Psych! I didn't. I said runes. And I happened to check in with our runologist, and I learned that runes are ancient inscriptions which tell you your future. And if I don't get on with answering your question, I think I know what my future's gonna be. Ouch. So as I was saying, 
Hold the amulet up to the light, but do not read the prunes. I mean runes. This will frighten the dragon and keep him from attacking you while you deal with your next problem. The wizard Mortimer, who's going to try and fry your behind with his lightning bolts. Bogus. Now here's how you handle this punk. Use the statue scroll three consecutive times to defend against the lightning bolts. Morty will do his best to fake you out after the first three bolts, but you can always tell when the fakes are coming if you watch the dragon's head because the dragon will always follow the direction of the lightning. See? Mortimer still has another two bolts in his arsenal, and one more nasty trick. So again, use your statue scroll three times to defend. Thinking he's got you by the power cord, Mortimer will declare, You have no more defenses. Prepare to die. Right after he lays that one on you, use the magnetic hand spell to suck the amulet from his hand to yours, and sit back and watch as the dragon cooks a Mortimer shish kebab. Good question, you'll be getting your free Game Pro T in the mail. Thank you. Now, if you other gamers have a hot one, put it on video, send it to us, get gutsy. We'll give you the address at the end of the show, okay? You gain invincibility in Target Earth when we return on Game Pro. Beam me up. Weapons and tactics. Whoa, whoa! Space! The final frontier! Oh, uh, sorry, wrong game. If you're a Genesis player, then you gotta be a fan of Target Earth, one of the all-time greats for the 16-bit game. Well, here's two mega tips that'll keep your space cruiser in business for as long as you wanna play the game. Game! Whoa! The first tip is major easy to pull off. Now, even though Target Earth is a one-player game, plug in the Player 2 controller. Once your spaceship is moving, just hit the Start button on the Player 2 controller. I now pronounce you invincible. You'll still take on some damage from the hits, but your ship will never blow up. Now, if you prefer the challenge of a destructible spaceship, but want to keep the game going forever, here's a Target Earth tip that'll give you all the continues you want. Okay, check it out. To make this trick happen, you have to at least make it to level two. Now, here's the part that takes some nerves, so listen up. You gotta take the plunge and die on purpose, that's right. Next, go back to the options screen and press start. When you see the babe appear with the words continue up, leave the options screen. Now you're back in the title screen, and if you did this one right, you should have nine continues, way to go. By the way, when you get down to two continues, you can run this trick all over again for another nine. Yes, Brendan and I have gone where no man has gone before, right? Yeah! Absolutely, all right. Let's check out what the gumballs in the lab have to say about our Star Trek for the NES. Now, if you're a Trekkie, or an ex-Trekkie, or a recovering Trekkie, or even if you've gone through Trekkie rehab, listen up, because there's no question that you need to get your thumbs on this cart for another dose of Starship Enterprise. Here is the story. The Enterprise has been sucked through a rip in the fabric of space and is now boldly traveling where no man has gone before. Kirk and the crew's mission is to repair the space hull and make it back to Federation space. Of course, the ship's dilithium crystals have burned out and there isn't enough power to warp out of the unknown zone. Or for that matter, to even maintain orbit for more than two hours. Okay, the only hope for Spock, Ohora, Chekhov, Sulu, Bones and the rest of the crew is to explore the closest planet they can find in search of the crystals they need to continue their journey. In the game, you'll visit at least four planets, engage Romulans in battle, make off with a cloaking device, and run through a number of other missions necessary for success. All of this happens over seven sections involving time travel, exploration, detective work, and major battles with familiar Star Trek baddies.
So, how did our crack team of Game Lab gargantuans rate Star Trek? Remember, the Game Labbers check our games out for graphics, sound, challenge, and fun factor. Now, while the Game Lab garbanzo beans like the graphics, especially the characters representing the original Star Trek cast, they were kind of disappointed with the backgrounds. A lot of the planets look the same, and some levels are nothing more than a graphic where you walk off on one side and reappear on the other. The sound effects are totally cool, but the music's kind of average. The game will give you a workout and ought to keep you entertained for many hours of play, though. Finally, while the guys in the game lab wouldn't say that this is the coolest game in the galaxy, they do say you're going to have a pretty good time. Now, speaking for myself, I have to say, well, I was kind of disappointed. Yeah. No way, dude. Really? Yeah, I was. Well, I, was I, I kind of liked the game, you know? I'm like sort of a Trek head, you know? I, well, I like the Trekkie part of it, but that was just okay. It's uh, fair enough, but, you know, uh, well, it's okay we disagree a little, right? Uh, One thing we don't disagree uh, on, though, is Bonk's Revenge for the TurboGrafx-16 game system, and we both agree it is awesome. That's right, but I definitely agree with you. Get a fist for that? No! Nice. Yeah! Everybody went bonkers for the Bonk Man when he first appeared in Bonk's Adventure, right? The Head Crusher's back, and he's better than ever! Bonk's old enemy, King Drool, is also back, and he's brought with him a new and nasty plan. You see, it seems old Drool has cut Moonland in half, and Bonk's mission is to bring the two halves back together. To do this, Bonk has to make it through seven perilous levels, bashing Drool's bad guys as he goes. Now you're going to meet up with some old adversaries in this game, like the dreaded Chicken Army. You also check out some new screaming meanies, like the fire-breathing lizards and rampaging dinosaurs. Bogus. Now, you remember in the first bonk how the bonkster would power up when he gobbled up the meat? Well, in this one, he does a whole lot more than power up, because, dude, when he gets his jaws around the second piece of meat, Bonkmeister goes totally bonkers! Yeah, he does like three times as much damage with his headbutts than he used to do. Check it out! And then when he lands on his noggin on this cart, every on-screen enemy takes total damage. So, how do the Game Lab Techie Toeheads rate this one? Well, have to say, perfection comes to mind! Yes, victory! The graphics are mondo colorful with some great looking prehistoric landscapes. And be sure to catch the animation on the boss characters, because, see, you've never seen it done better. Sound? I don't know. I got a thing for the sound of Bach's most massive head thumps. They just kind of go thunk, you know? It's really cool. And the gamers of all ages and skill levels can play along. But finally, when it comes to music, well, I'd have to say that that's pretty good, too. The gameplay's challenging, though not impossible, and it's fun. Bonk's a classic video game, and it's Bonk! It's Bonk! Bonk on, dudes! Bonk! <laughs> Oh, uh, hey, hey, bud, bud, this is my favorite part of the show, so stop playing, let's do it. Oh, yeah, okay. Now, with most of the action in the arcade centering around CD-ROM live action games, we thought you might like to take a look at the new arcade game that uses animation. Yeah, and they do use it. It's Dragon's Lair 2, bud. And if you were into the first game in the series, you better get down to the arcade quick to check this one out, because I must say... It is happening. We've been playing it all day. Now, if you're wondering why the animation quality on this game is so awesome to the point of blowing out every other animation game in the universe, you gotta understand that the dudes behind this game are the very same people who brought you The Land Before Time, An American Tale, and All Dogs Go to Heaven. The company's Sullivan Bluth, and they're supposed to be the number one dudes in animation. Check out the gameplay. Princess Daphne has been kidnapped by the heinous evil wizard Wardock. Her mother is ticked off big time and makes Daphne's husband, Dirk the Daring, go after Morty to bail out the princess. Not an easy chore, dudes. Mordok has a time traveler and is jumping all around history to avoid Dirk and his happening sword. Now, 
since all the Dirk Stirk could put together is this busted up time machine he got from this old uh, used time machine car lot, it's not going well for Dirk the Daring. This game is equipped with total state-of-the-art laser technology with a monster 25-inch monitor. And you're going to need lightning-fast reflexes to compete in this one because the action is fast and non-stop. On the money, bud. Nice. And speaking of money, if you're going to go to the arcade and play Dragon's Lair 2, you better bring lots of money, bud, because there is no turning back. My turn. See you guys later. Bye. Hello. My name is Trevor Williams from Reston, Virginia, and I managed to score 240,630 big points on Dynamite Duke, the Sega Genesis. Hi, I'm John Meissner from Ottawa, Canada, and I finished Bonk's Adventure for the TurboGrafx-16. Hi, this is Kevin Murphy from Smyrna, Georgia, and on Strider for the Sega Genesis, I got a cool 158,950. Unbelievable scores, dude. Your GamePro subscription is in the mail, so check it out. And remember, if you want to win, you got to send them in. Hot tips and tactics for Valus 3 when we come back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. What? Hey, how you doing? Bud, you off to SWAT World? No, 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 I'm in the middle of a great game of Tetris. All right, all right I'm going to go to SWAT World. I'll put on pause. Make sure you do not take this off pause, okay? Okay. Later, bud. Got it. Whoa! Ow! Uh, dudes, I think I'm stuck. Hopefully, we're back in SWAT world. So stick with me, because I have a happening level selector for the Genesis game Ballast 3. Okay, here goes nothing. Here's what you do. Whoa! First, bring up the title screen. Now, hold down button A, button B, button C, up and start all at the same time. I'm talking a real finger stretch. If you do this correctly, the screen will display Select Map. Use the up or down on your control pad to select your level. Finally, hit Start and you'll be exactly where you want to be. Okay, let's run that down one more time. First, bring up the title screen. Now, hold down button A, button B, button C, up, and the Start button all at the same time. When you see Select Map, Choose the level you want. Finally, hit start, and you'll start at that level. How about a classic trick for powering up any of your turtles in the Game Boy version of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? It's easy. Watch. You're smack in the middle of doing battle with the Foot Clan. Michelangelo is tiring out. <laughs> What's a turtle to do? No sweat, dude. First, press the start button to halt the action. Next. Press up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, and A. And be sure to do it in that order. Go back to the game totally powered up. Here's the order one more time. First, put the game on pause. Next, hit up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, and A. That's all there is to it, turtles. Yeah, right. Now, we don't know if this cart's even in the stores yet, but the Game Lab Eggheadsters managed to get their mitts on. Da -da -da! Ultraman! Yes! For the SNES. Here's a preview. Now, for those of you who may not be hip to who this dude is, Ultraman is this megastar in Japan on the Japanese tube, and he even did some time in the USA on the tube in about the 70s. Disco era, yeah. Now, he's the ultimate warrior and protector of peace in the universe, and for eons, he's been fighting against Gudis, the heinous virus who's been trying to wipe out all life forms different than him, right? In the Ultraman game, Gudis has infected Earth, causing all sorts of mutant monsters, and these bogus bosses are seriously, heinously ugly. Ultraman wants to do battle with the Gudis virus and his mutant bad guys, but the atmosphere on Earth is so polluted that he can't even handle it in his Ultraman form. So, he transforms himself into this human guy named Jack Shindo. And then he sets out to save the world from these monster mutant bosses, right? The good news is, Jack can become Ultraman when he needs to, but he can only do it for three minutes at a time. And the game, it lets you use all kinds of gamer skills. You know, you get these special weapons along with, like, hand-to-hand -hand stuff. You get martial arts. You get wrestling. You get street brawling. Oh, yeah! 
Oh, there's one thing I forgot to tell you. Ultraman is 197 feet tall, and he weighs in at about 58,000 tons, so I guess the dude can handle himself if you get my drift. Come to think of it, can you imagine having to feed this guy as long as you don't get stuck with the check at dinner? <laughs> now, the action's happening, the graphics are cool, the game is hot, so look for it, because it's one cart that you're definitely going to want to get friendly with. Bring Nate back from the dead with a cool tip for Fantasy Star 2. Coming up on Game Prime. Hi, I'm Matt Brazil's of Hubbard, Ohio, and I have a tip for Fantasy Star 2 for the Sega Genesis. Neil will be killed by Nia first while fighting alone, but you can bring her back to life while your three main characters fight. Before going to Climate Troll, have Sheer still moon dew. Give to any character except Nia. When Nia is killed, you can use the moon dew to bring her back to life. Now that is a great tip. I'm sending you your Game Pro t-shirt personally. Now that about puts it on ice for today. While we're out of here, remember to send in your tapes and tips so that we can keep the Game Lab goons employed. After all, you know what I mean? Someone's got to do it to it. Hey, yeah, very kind of you. So, here comes the address, okay? Get quick, Game Pro. P.O. Box 1678, Venice, California, 90291, yeah? All right, from my man to B-Man, I'm J.D. Ross. We'll catch up with you next week on Game Pro. Peace. <laughs> Hi, I'm Regis Philbin on the next live, Mitzi Gaynor and Marsha Warfield from Night Court. Later in the week, Felicia Rashad, Dolly Parton, Danny Aiello, and so much more. Online. Monday at 9. Right here on Channel 7.